5s1, anterior hand, hypothenar eminence touching the pubic bone and then coming slightly superior. Okay. You reduce the pressure to zero gram, you start increasing the pressure gram by gram until you engage the diaphragm, then follow the movements until you feel signs of release. If you encounter repetitive movement, you become a barrier to it, wait for another way of release, and then you gently move up. You turn your chair, you do the respiratory diaphragm, you palpate the cyphoid process, you lay your palm, and your forearm on the body, your palm is on the frame, like this. Your hand underneath, you slide it in, and you turn, so the spine is lying on your palm like that. Third. C7 in the middle of your palm. You slide it in between face and shoulder, you palpate the clavicles and come a little bit inferior to the layer, palm and forearm on the chest. Fourth is the hyoid. After matting out, you cup the cervical vertebrae in your uh, fingers like this, bend or lift out your uh, thumb. You gently reduce the, these two fingers, palpate the hyoid. Now, and then we follow its movements as it wants to release. If it doesn't move, you can give a little nudge. Or you just simply follow the movements and wait until it settles in the middle or lifts up anterior. Then you mad up. And then fifth diaphragm. OCB, occipital cranial base. <coughs> so once you are under the head, this is step one. Directing energy from your fingers to the suboccipital muscles. Step two is going to be the platform. And then step three is going to be gapping and you stabilize C1 with your index and middle finger, your ring finger and little finger. You gently pull uh, occiput towards yourself superiorly and gap the two structures from each other. Then you do transfer spread, meld with the finger pads with occiput and then you gently spread transversely, like this, just to loosen the fibrous ring around foramen magnum and separate the condyles. Once you've done, stretch your fingers out again, lay the head comfortably in your palm, melt with occiput with your finger pads and start 5 gram superior traction of the dual tube. That's how you go underneath, and this is step one. And when you start bending your fingers, that is going to be step two. And three is not visible, so this is four. You bend one leg over your patient, like this. Put one hand through the triangle, 
tilt the palace towards yourself, put your elbow down. And you slide your hand underneath the sacrum. Let the patient down and stretch the leg. Wait a little bit. Stabilize L5, L4, L3 with your finger uh, tips or pads. So you come underneath. You stabilize the vertebrae. Separate sacrum and L5 by gentle thigh gram inferior traction on the sacrum. And then you melt out. And then you do a medial compression on the ASIS. Like this. This opens up the SI joint. Once they are open, you feel sacrum drop in your palm. And you gently mat out. You lean on the table and you start inferior traction towards the feet of the dural tube. And once you uh, evaluated and treated the dural tube and you got to the other end, then you tilt the pelvis. On your elbow, you turn your uh, forearm, turn your palm down and pull it out under the knee. And then what's next? So first you are going to go under the sacrum and under the occipital. Once you are there, you are, do, you are evaluating the rocking movements of the bones. And you start treatment by adding 5 grams at the end range of motions. And then you re-evaluate. And then you focus on uh, the gliding movement. This is flexion. This is extension. Evaluate and then start treating by adding 5 gram and the end range of motion with your leading hand. And then you re evaluate, see how much it improved. And then you mad out somewhere in the middle. And position 1 is under L5S1, under the sacrum. And you ask the patient to lift the head up, put your head, hand under the occiput, not under the neck, under the occiput, the mouth, and treat the dual tube. Very relaxed. <laughs> Good. And then what's next? The lateral ridge of the frontal here. You melt with the bone. You gently lay your middle and index finger on the frontal. Little one doesn't touch. And after melding, you apply gentle 5 gram anterior lift. Follow the movements. Let's keep your intention on 5 gram anterior lift. And then once you feel viscous compliance, you melt out, let the frontal go. Right. Index finger. Ear canal. Imaginary headphone line. Here is the ridge. Once you found the ridge, you go a little bit inferior. Lay your, place your lay your uh, fingers like about one centimeter from each other. Put your two thumbs together. Then you apply gentle 5 gram medial compression. Once you feel temporals flare out, or you feel the two parietals, then you wait 10 seconds. Wait for the fluid exchange in the sinus. Then you start superior traction with 5 gram. <coughs> Follow the movements of the frontal until you feel viscous compliance. Then you mad out. What's next? Mad with the greater ring. Put the rest of your fingers under the occiput. You mad with the scenery. And then you apply gentle 5 gram posterior traction to, for compression. Once you feel it's fully compressed, then you apply 
Just change in tension, apply 5 gram anterior lift until you feel this is compliant. While you're doing compression, decompression, you follow all the movements that the sphenoid bone is doing while maintaining your either posterior traction or anterior decompression. Now it's done. What's next? Temporals. Temporals. Very good. Okay. It's a little more steps than before. First you have to do evaluation. Evaluation of the circumferential movement of the temporal. So, ring finger on the processus mastoideus. Middle finger in the ear canal. Index finger on arcus zygomaticus. Palm doesn't touch the head. <coughs> the temporals are out of synchrony. Yeah, since I'm here, I'm going to go back. Okay. So you evaluate uh, motion synchrony and you evaluate range of motion of rotation. And you increase range of motion by adding 5 gram at the end ranges. Like this. Remember if they are out of synchrony. And you put them back by holding one at the end range, wait for the other to catch up, and then let them uh, move together. When you melt out, then what? Oh, I'm not done. I have to do the medial lateral movement uh, of the ma uh, mastoid part of the temporal. So, this is going to be flexion and this is going to be extension. Flexion, extension. If they are moving out of synchrony, you put them back into synchrony, let them move together. You also increase range of motion by adding 5 grams here and here, both ends of range. That's how you go under the head. And then your thumb pads are on the processus mastoidus. Then you are going to mad out and do what? What's next? So we are going to disengage the occipitomastoid suture. One hand is under the, the occiput, transfers. Uh, your thumb is in the ear canal, and then you grab the ear close to the head, the cartilage, and start applying 5 gram posterolateral lateral traction. So this is posterolateral. This is a sutural technique, so it's just like two magnets separating. Okay? And you're done. Then you change hand position, do it on the other side. Thumb being the ear canal. Grab the ear at the cartilage, close to the head. Meld with the bone and start applying 5 gram posterolateral traction until it disengages temporal from occipital. Then you do tentorium treatment. Mm -hmm. Both uh, thumbs in the ear canal, grab both ears at the head, close to the head, then apply 5 gram posterolateral traction, follow the movements until you feel viscous compliance. Then you melt out. And then you do what? Re-evaluation. Very good. So, circumferential movement evaluation and then posterolateral movement evaluation. Okay, what's next? The TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint. Two-step technique. Compression first, decompression afterwards. During finger, Look for the place on the mandible where you can 
uh, lay your fingers, gently place your palm on the face and start compression with 5 gram on the mandible superiorly. Once you feel that the musculus masseter is in your palm, or just, you just feel that the joint is fully compressed, and you can do decompression. You come on the ramus, ramus mandibulae. You work with this part of your fingers. You meld. And then you start applying 5 gram inferior traction towards the feet. Follow the movements until you feel viscous compliance. Then do a 10 degree anterior lift. Then you melt out. Then what? We do listening. You can do a steel point. Very good. Since you are here at the head, you can do a CV4. Okay? So you go underneath, you put your two thumb pads together, follow flexion, extension, flexion on the occiput, extension at the end range of motion, be a barrier to flexion. Follow extension if it occurs, but resist flexion. Follow extension. Resist flexion. Once you feel the steel point occur, just relax your hands and wait for the rhythm to come back. And once it's once it came back, flexion, extension. Follow it for a few more cycles, re-evaluate, and then gently melt down. But you can do steel points anywhere else if you want to. Okay, steel point is done. What's next? You have to do the listening stations again, because that's why you did it in the beginning. Now you want to see how good you work, or how good your patient's body work. So, and then again, you do heels, then you do dorsums of the feet, then you do the thighs, anterior thighs. ASISs. Rib cage. Shoulders. Head. First hold, hold. Second hold, hold. And third hold, hold. 